Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. And good morning, everybody, for another beautiful January morning. Uh, at least it's a beautiful morning for January. What are you going to do? Uh, so, uh, thanks for joining us again this morning for Faith in Our Hometown. If you're at the 6.30 hour, what are you doing up? But hey, if it's nine o'clock, why aren't you in church? No, just kidding. At any rate, we're glad that you joined us here for another Sunday of Faith in Our Hometown. Again, our weekly conversation for those of us who live in the greater Joplin area about some of the things that are happening in our area and the ways that we can make our place here where we live a little bit more the way we think they should be, or for those of us who are religious, the way we think God wants them to be and the way we treat each other. One of those ways that we do that is always to care for those folks um, uh, who might be challenged in any way. And so my guest this morning is going to be Jeff Jones, who's the executive director of the sheltered workshops, both in Joplin and in Carthage. And we're going to be talking a little bit about what the shelter workshop does and what his work is all about and how we help some of those folks. We're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute, so stay tuned. I have arthritis in my knees and it was just excruciating. I wish I would have done something sooner found myself not able to go up and down stairs, which is bad because we realized we were going to have to sell our house. We decided just to take the, the first, the worst one first, and uh, we did. I was back to work in six weeks. Uh, six months later, I had surgery on the second one, and, uh, and I'm back to work in five weeks. And I was a little scared, a little apprehensive, even though I knew everything that was going to happen. Um, but it just, I was just impressed. Life is short. And, and I waited, I, I think I waited too long. Well, again, thanks for joining us for this Sunday, uh, this episode of Faith in Our Hometown. And again, my guest this morning is Jeff Jones, who's the executive director of the of the work uh, the shelter workshop, both in Joplin and in Carthage. That's right. So you you you're just, just like me, spreading yourself over several little towns. Well, that's right. You know, yeah. yeah. Just got an opportunity here the first of October to kind of step into Joplin, and so. Uh, we're in that transition period right now. Well, good, uh, good. I remember reading that. So, uh, first of all, Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the Joplin area? How long have you been part of the communities? Um, I've lived in Carthage all my life. There you go. So, uh, lived and worked there with the exception of two years uh, yeah. in Carthage the whole time. And been over the Carthage workshop for about eight years. And then I uh, started with the Joplin workshop back in October. and. So we've got, you know, three they or four months. They, they just said they'd leverage some of that experience. Well, yeah, yeah it, it seemed like there were some synergies there and uh, allow us to kind of bring things together for both workshops and really um, we're part of Jasper County and the Carthage Joplin area. And so uh, it allowed us to kind of tap into the resources that both communities have there. So sh share with our viewers that may not know what a sheltered workshop is. What, what, what do you guys do? Well, we, we provide employment for mentally and physically disabled adults. And so we do a lot of different things to employ people with disabilities. And so Missouri is kind of a unique setup as far as sheltered workshops go. Uh, we have an industrial model, which means each one of the 89 shops in Missouri um, is uh, or their own standalone business. So right. we have to turn a profit. And most of us are 501c3, so we're also nonprofits, and that is attractive to some of our clients as well. Yeah. But uh, we provide services then to um, employ individuals with disabilities. And so for the Carthage shop, one of the things we do there is we provide uh, secure document destruction, and that's kind of our, our base service that allows us to expand. Uh, into other areas like recycling, and then we also do service projects. So, I mean, just for folks, who, I mean, I, you know, so in other words, secure document destruction. So, in other words, to say if I worked for a, oh, a tax service or something, tax I could call service, you up or banks, yeah. doctors' offices, anybody that wants something securely destroyed. We have uh, 
locked bins, locked uh, trucks, comes into a secure area in the building, and uh, then we, we destroy it. And our folks go through background checks and drug screens, and there's sure. some other criteria for that. But we're NAID certified, which is the National Association for Information Destruction. Oh. And so I that kind of was such a thing. Yeah. See, I learned something here on a Sunday morning. That's good. So yeah, yeah. And you get certified for that. I mean, you know, well, you get certified to destroy yeah. stuff. Yeah, and it just holds us accountable that we're going to adhere to the standard. So um, it's yeah. kind of a self-policing kind of deal. Well, so. which is good. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I want somebody going. I, I, if I give it to you to destroy it, I want to make sure it gets destroyed. Nobody's going to be messing with it. That's right. And then we take that destroyed uh, paper and we actually send it to a. A recycle company and they'll turn it into new paper so that's another way we generate revenue for the workshop wonderful okay so like so who so these are developmentally disabled adults okay so like for example uh, and like so how many in each one of the workshops and how many folks do you have working for you so at the Joplin workshop we've got 55 individuals uh, okay. that are clients or workshop employees and then we have about 10 staff members and um, so that's what we, those 10 staff members support them either through transportation or supervisors or management. And that in the Carthage workshop, we've got about 63 employees and about the same See number See there, of staff. Carthage is bigger than Joplin for 10. It's good, <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah. I'm just, I always <laughs> laugh because I'm, you know, I, you know, I always get such a big kick out of this area because everybody wants to tell me how different all those communities are from each other. You know that Carthage is really different than Joplin, and Joplin's really different than Webb City, and Webb City's really different than Carl Junction, and blah, blah, blah. And I know that they've each one got their own little thing, but I've been here, well, what, tw 12 years, 13 years, and I just gotta really tell you that I kinda do see the whole thing as kind of one big area, rather than, you know, this little, you know, uh, connection that there is. We're, we're really, inter it's really interesting because each community has their own little, uh, vibe I guess if, mm -hmm. for yeah. lack of a better way of saying it but really there is a sense of community not only in each one but in the air in the area as well right and so um, and that's a compliment to everybody that's not a that's yeah. not a uh, you know a, a hit on anybody that's a compliment to everybody but that's the way I feel and that's one of the reasons why we got a show like this I mean this is why we're, this is what we're doing what we're doing is to again raise everybody up together yeah. uh, you know we don't have to compete with each other let's just all be our best selves and we're gonna wind up being a whole lot better off yeah we're we're really blessed uh, I mean I feel blessed as a community in, in both places because mm -hmm. uh, man, we just received such tremendous support from everyone and and uh, you know people take us under their wing and, and we appreciate that and and that's kind of what helps us all be successful yeah so. Yeah, so um, that's like a hundred and like a hundred and some odd employees that that are and not to count the staff, but I mean that's just you know of, of you know clients slash employees. Yeah, I don't know how do you even they're kind of a little of both. A little bit yeah, of both. A little yeah. bit of both, and uh, they just are, are there, and you give them something worthwhile doing the community, gives them a chance to feel good about themselves and to uh, you know to work hard and make a paycheck and do all those things. That's great. Yeah, it's really, for them, it's a sense of community and belonging. And so they, they have a great time at work, and they love to work, and they, they get self-worth out of that. But they also love the social aspect of coming to work. And, um, you know, uh, they've supported the United Way um, the past few years. We, we received the Spirit of Giving Award in Carthage a couple love of it. years love ago. It. And uh, for some folks that are financially challenged, sure. they, they uh, donated $3,700. Um, then one of our employees this last year received that same award. He took it upon himself to uh, have a fundraiser and, and he biked from uh, Joplin to Illinois and he, got, he raised funds and he raised $4,300. So wow. they also have a sense of giving back to the community. Sure. And, um, and we've got those same stories in Joplin as well. So yeah. um, that's and wonderful. There, there's some great individuals. Yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, one of my cousins, uh, uh, you know, was born with Down syndrome. And um, uh, he lives in a little place called the Village of the Blue Rose up in, you know, uh, north, you know, east Missouri, and they are, 
I mean, they run a restaurant and all that stuff is connected with the village. And, and I mean, you know, I, he has such joy talking about the people that they serve and all of their customers at the restaurant and their wait on tables and they do their thing. And I, I love it. I just think it's, it's great because again, um, you know, he might not be able to do all those things, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, might not be able to, you know, manage, you know, all those things without a little bit of extra support. But what I love is the fact that now that he's been able to do that. I mean, again, he's got, he's got his ministry. He's got his job. He's got his thing that he does in conjunction with his friends. And, and, it's, and it's, you know, a chance for him to have some independence. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, society has really changed when it comes to this community over time, a lot of times they were isolated and, and placed in a group sure. home and that kind of thing. And now they're a lot more integrated. The school systems have uh, done that. They've taken them from, uh, you know, special needs classes to integrated education and they only taken them out or kids out for, you know, special circumstances. Stuff and they it's need to be same, taken out for, yeah. Yeah, and that's the way employment is now. Um, we have such support in the community. We, we're taking some of our employees into uh, our customers' locations and they're right there with their employees and, and working alongside them and supporting some of the things they do. And it's been a great opportunity for both companies to grow and, and uh, have a better sense of community from that aspect, I guess. You know, and I'm guessing, uh, you mentioned a little earlier, the joy that they have in working together and having that community. You know, um, I'm just gonna say, I think we're probably we'd all benefit a little bit from being able to watch some of that in action because sometimes we need to be able to take that same joy in our own ability to work and in the joy that comes from us being able to do a job and do it well and be paid and to contribute and to feel like we're doing something that's making the world a better place. And they get that, you know, from what they do with you. Oh yeah, you, you get blessed every day. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, when I was younger, I was kind of in a different field and I was probably, uh, I was probably a pretty grumpy guy, maybe <laughs> not the most patient person in the world. They say that about me too, but don't, don't listen to them. <laughs> but, uh, but this has uh, been really good for me as well. And you come to work and people have joy each day and, and it just makes it a lot easier. And you, you really appreciate, you know, all those individuals. Yep, appreciate what you've got and appreciate what you're able to do. It is kind of a blessing. Um, my guest this morning is uh, Jeff Jones, who's the executive director of uh, the Shelter Workshops, both in Joplin and in Carthage. Um, we've been here talking a little bit about um, what those shelter workshops do, and especially here in Eric, because every shelter workshop actually, you know, every director, God love them, has to go out <laughs> and find whatever they're gonna do, what jobs they're gonna do, and how they're gonna contract to do it, and all those kinds of things. And so we've been talking with him about uh, both the Joplin and the Carthage workshops. Uh, that are right here in our own area. So uh, why don't you go refresh your coffee cup or do whatever you're gonna do. Uh, this is Faith in Our Hometown and we're gonna be right back after a real quick break. So stick with us. You're watching Faith in Our Hometown on KSN TV, brought to you as a community service of Mercy Hospital Joplin. Well, again, thanks for joining us for sun another Sunday morning at Faith in Our Hometown. I will say to all of you, um, be sure to check us out on Facebook and those kinds of things. If you've got story ideas for us, every once in a while I run into one of you in the grocery store. Uh, I had to laugh because one lady I ran into a few weeks, I ran into one guy on a plane uh, a couple months ago, and uh, he said, he looked over at me and said, your, your, your father, Jay. I wasn't dressed in black at that point in time. And I said, yes, I am. He goes, well, I recognize your voice before I would have, you know, even recognize your face. And I said, well, I said, I think that's probably a good thing, you know? And then the other day I, uh, uh, I ran into somebody in the grocery store. He says, I just want you to know I watch your show every week. I think you're doing a great job. I said, well, do you have any ideas? And he said, no, no, you're doing fine. <laughs> but I am going to say to any of you, if you do have story ideas for us, or if you're, you know, out here making our community better by some of the work that you're doing, 
please give us a call or contact us because we're always looking for good story ideas. Again, my guest this morning, Jeff Jones, who's the executive director of uh, our sheltered workshops, both in Carthage and in Joplin. Uh, you said there are 89 of those across the state, right? Yep. And how many do we have here in our area? We know of your two, but what others are uh, out there? We've got Crowder Industries down in, in Neosho. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the Lamar Industries in Lamar, right? And then there's a workshop in Monette, and I think those are the mo ones that are most proximal to us. There's a couple in Springfield and Bolivar and yeah. Around, well, so. I, I knew Lamar was up there, and so I was trying to give Lamar a little bit of a shout out. I used to be the pastor of the parish there too, uh -huh, so at okay. one point in time. So hi to all the folks in Lamar this morning as well. Um, but yeah, I, I I just think I you know I I guess I've been tangentially connected with sheltered workshops most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I've either known folks that have, you know, that have um, used their services and become employees, um, you know, uh, you know, just kind of watched uh, other people, you know, volunteered through the years. Um, my brother at one point in time was, was thinking about, you know, going into, you know, helping the sheltered workshop in his area and those kinds of things. Um, you know, so I, I just have always been impressed with the work that's done. So tell me about, you know, some about, tell, me, tell our viewers about some of the most exciting things that you see in terms of your clients and differences that's made in their lives. Well, I'll tell you, there are jobs that you think are going to be really complicated and it might be difficult for our folks to pick up on them. And, and so you, you're doing the time study and you're trying to break it down so you can make sure everybody's successful because we want them to enjoy the job, but we also want them to make money at it too. Sure. And so uh, you're thinking, oh, this one's going to be tough. And they'll pick up on that one like it's butter, you know, they're, <laughs> they're on it, you know. And so then uh, jobs that you think are real easy sometimes aren't as easy. And, yeah. and so uh, it, the trick for me is to figure it out what, what uh, keeps them from being successful on those so we can make sure we price that right and, and present it to them so they're successful in that process. So. so say a little bit more about that because again, if folks don't know how that works, now you mentioned earlier the, the document destruction, which is, I mean, I'm guessing a part of your employees part of the time, but there yeah. are other jobs that you go out and bid in effect. That's right. So if you're a, a, a local company and you have uh, a job that's uh, time consuming or tedious or just doesn't allow you to be as productive, that's kind of where we specialize. We, we try to take those jobs off your hands and package them up so um, they will make you more efficient online. So we do some sub wire assemblies for a customer. So we, we wire everything up so they just have to put two screws in that part and it's part of the fixture that they do. or we do some kidding so uh, it goes right to their end customer and, it, and it's difficult for them to run it on their production line but we have shrink tunnels that allow us to do that. Um, we do uh, all kinds of uh, uh, box forming or display making so um, if you've got a holiday display that you want to do and you don't have the manpower to do it, those are things that we do. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other things that we do, we pick educational kits for uh, a company. So uh, we set up a pick line and we go from 50 parts to 150 parts and allows their customer then to build a robot. Uh, and so um, some of the other things we do in Joplin is we have a screen printing service, an embroidery service. So if you're wanting logo wear and uh, want it for your picnic or just for your employees, uh, contact us and we'll, we'll screen print that stuff for you. Um, we're, we're not afraid to attempt about anything. <laughs> so, um, Kind of confident over there, aren't you? So well, no, we're, we're, we're going to try it. But, uh, you know, I love we, it. We, we just want, try to find ways to employ our folks and employ more uh -huh. folks with disabilities. And so um, we try to always keep who we've got employed and then as if we can grow and add that's what we try to do so um, we've got a few people on our waiting list and that's a good way to start 2019 yeah but we just need more work not and I think now, that's you have indicative of all workshops though sure so. so let me ask for a clarification so you got more people on your list you're talking about more uh, potential employees or are you talking about more customers to do more services for uh, more potential employees okay. so We've got folks that want to go to work. Um, we just need more work opportunities for them. 
And so part of what I try to do is make sure we consistently employ the folks we have because um, I don't like people being laid off and in and, and the eight years I've been in Carthage, we haven't had a layoff and so We've always it's probably consistently where they, grow. It's probably where they give you another job. Well, that's right. And so we, <laughs> and we want that same kind of success in Joplin. Uh -huh. and, and we've got a great uh, nucleus of employees there as well. Yeah. And we just need a little help from our community for, with a little more work. So. Yeah, so I mean, that'd be one way folks could help the shuttle. Or if you, if you hear something or you heard something uh, that, that sounds like that, that, you know, that, that the shelter workshop could work with, uh, mm -hmm. or that an idea, you might get in touch. Um, again, uh, let's see whether we got a number here to put up on the screen, but if not, I've got it for everybody. 417-781-2862, uh, there you go, it's right there, 417-781-2862. And uh, they could get in touch with you there. Jeff, are there other opportunities for, like say our viewers, is there, is there volunteer work that you, that you ask people to come do? Is there anything that, any other ways that somebody might help I mean, obviously, donations always, you know, can go to the yes. shelter works. You know, they, they would help, too. We'll, we'll always You're a 501c3. Exactly. Yep. Well, <laughs> you know, I, there's something about all of our organizations that have to spend money to help people. We'll always take folks' donations, you know, because it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the least fun and probably in some ways the least ministerial thing that some of us have to do. But let's face it, we wouldn't be able to open the doors if we didn't have it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things that's kind of a big challenge for us is transportation, and, and that's irregardless, I think, of any workshop. Um, mm -hmm. It's just being able to get our folks to and from work or to a job site. And so um, one of the things we're trying to take donations for are, is for transportation, and particularly here in Joplin. And so we, uh, we were given a vehicle from the city this last fall, and uh, and so we're just needing we're trying to raise more funds to get another vehicle that just allows us to. Because you found it helped. You yeah. found, had the one and it helped, and now you're looking for another one. Yeah. Isn't it? In some ways, isn't that great? How when you expand a little bit, and then you start to see, oh my gosh, this helped so much. Now how can we expand a little bit more and do that much more? Yeah. But that sounds like the nature of your whole job. Well, that's it. We you have to adapt a little bit, and then. You see, see what the needs are, and you just kind of move down a different path. You know, we we kind of face some adversity. You know, we talk about the tornado, and then uh, we had a laundry business in Joplin, and and we had a fire a couple of years ago, and so we've had to change uh, what we did in that building. So we've refurbished that building, um, but uh, it's really left us with uh, opportunity to grow. Uh, we've got 16,000 square feet of space, and uh, one of the things we're doing is trying to do more recycling. And um, so we really are after people's cardboard. And and uh, if you're a small business, we've got we've uh, improvised our laundry carts into cardboard collection, so we can <coughs> drop it off at your back door. You fill it up, and then we just come by like a route and pick it up. Uh, when it's full, and so uh, keeps that stuff from going in the landfill. It employs a couple people at our place, and it generates revenue for us. And so, uh, just we we just want to tap that resource in the Joplin area. And uh, you need to call our outreach house and see whether or not we can't do that. We wind up with so much cardboard and everything like that. I know that we put some of it in some of the, you know, we send it with some of our folks to, the, to some of the other recycling centers, mm -hmm. but you know, that might be a little bit of a yeah, help to yeah, come by and do that. some of this stuff. I always look for those opportunities on the show and when we're having these kind of conversations to say, hmm, can we help you out in the good work that you're doing and you can help us out in the good work that we're doing by partnering in some of those ways. And I know that that is so true for many of us in the helping, uh, you know, uh, professions around the mm -hmm. area that with some of those things work. Uh, and so I always, I'm always happy for, uh, you know, uh, for some of those connections to be able to do that. Because again, when we help each other, um, you know, everybody wins. Yeah, and that's, that's again, sure. part of why we do the show and part of why we talk to each other and, and try to figure out how we can make a better um, dent in the, in the needs of the world if we help each other to do so. That's yeah. right. 
So if I could ask you, I mean, obviously you can't name names or do any of those things, and uh, but if I could ask you what uh, maybe would be some of the mo the big success stories that you've had in the last few months, or the things that you're most excited about that are going to get you moving toward the future here. Um, well, I just um, success stories I think are for me are probably just some of the unique things our individuals do, and so. Um, they really have a, a spirit of not quitting. We've had, uh, I've got a gentleman that's in a wheelchair that push mows his own yard, and you're like, how do you do that, you know? And yeah. so he's got, a he motor yeah, he's got a motorized uh, wheelchair, and he'll push a push mower, and he's going back and forth, and you're, that's, I don't, my brain doesn't work that way, yeah. but you know, he finds a way to get it done. And that's, that's, that's really the way a lot of our folks are. They just, they do unique things that you just can't believe. Well, and that's a real blessing. I'm glad you're there for them, um, you know, because again, some of those folks that we would want to sometimes move out of society or think that they're just not going to be able to produce as much, teach us a whole thing about producing in ways that maybe we never would have thought of. Uh, we're going to be right back after this Mercy Minute. Don't go away. We'll be right back to wrap up. A new baby changes the world and each of us. The Sisters of Mercy devoted themselves to offering exceptional maternity and delivery care, training generations of nurses to do the same. Mercy continues to answer the same call, to not only care for your baby, but to cherish them too. Mercy, in every era, your life is our life's work. Learn why we serve at mercy.net slash legacy. When they discovered there was no hospital, the Sisters of Mercy built one, as they had so many times before, offering healing and hope on the edge of the frontier. Mercy continues to answer the same call, to bring care wherever you or your child need it most. Mercy, in every era, your life is our life's work. Learn why we serve at mercy.net slash legacy. Well, thanks again for joining us for another Sunday morning on Faith in Our Hometown. It is so good to always spend some of a Sunday morning with you, and I always love visiting with you all in the community when I get the opportunity to do so. My guest this morning was Jeff Jones, uh, who is the director of the sheltered workshops, both in Joplin and in Carthage. So it gets our greater Joplin area there tied in in a wonderful way. Um, you know, one of the things that we were talking about this morning is the dignity of every human person. And I think that needs to be one of those things that we probably could never build up enough, no matter how much we talked about it. Every person has got an inherent dignity, and one of the beauties of the work that the Shelter Workshops do, does is that it helps all of those individuals to kind of help raise themselves up and feel like they're contributing members of our community, uh, working along with us and you know, keeping things chugging along. Uh, they're a blessing. So we God bless the Shelter Workshops. Uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to be right back next week with Faith in Our Hometown. Come see us. Thanks for watching. Faith in Our Hometown can be seen Sunday mornings at 6.30 and 9 a.m. on KSN. Brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin.